Welcome one and all, I am Technivorous here to remind you, make sure you reduce your Z offset on that subscribe button down there and give the notification bell a good first layer squish. That way you can get notified every time we put up a new 3D printing and tech video. That being said, today's video is brought to you by Weeble. Check the description down below for a link that will help you get 12 free stocks when you sign up and fund your account with Weeble today. And now that we've got all that behind us, let's talk about why we're here today. Today we're going to be diving into a little bit more in-depth description of our first object. So let's get back into our calibration parts here, and we are going to open up the temperature tower. We're going to go over a little bit about what it is, what it does, and how to use it. So let's import that to the build plate here. We'll square off against it, and I think we will zoom in a little bit here, and you can see then it has these numbers written on it. Um, each of those is going to be printed at a different temperature. Now, in order to do that, you would be using what is known as a post-processing script, and I will show you how to do that real quickly now. So let's go to, I haven't done this in a while. Let's go to, where the heck is it? Oh, yes. Printer. No. Oh man, guys, I'm sorry. It's been a really long time since I have done this. So let's. Uh, I think we might have to slice here. Let's slice it. So, there, oh, it is in extensions. I was looking right at it. So we're gonna go to post-processing, modify G-code. Basically what we wanna do is add a script to change the temperature. Starting temperature to 20, temperature increment negative five, change layer 52, change layer offset. So, um, we can add that, but first we want to see how many layers we have in our model here. So we're going to slice again. Since it destroyed our slice the first time when we changed to setting. And, da -da 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 -da, and we're going to figure out how high a layer is, or uh, uh, how high one of these stacks is for a layer. And we want, let's see. See, the first one starts right there. That is layer number five. So number five through number five through fifty-one. So that's going to be forty-five, and then the offset is one, two, three, four, five. Forty-five with an offset of five. That's pretty easy to remember. So. 45, change layer offset is 5, OK, close, and we are going up by increments of 5 starting at 220, so that's good. Alright, so let's slice it up. So now if we export this G-code, which I'm going to do, and we're going to open here and take a look at, so you can make sure that the temperature changes there. Uh, you don't really have to do this. I just want to, because I want to be sure that you guys understand what's going on here. So you can use the G-Code Viewer to do this. Um, I tend to just use Notepad++ because I use it for everything. So, let's see here if we can find a temperature change. 
all these G1s are the same, they're moves, okay? There is another line here, that's not a temp change, it's positioning. Uh, G code is really, really long, so there is a lot to scroll through. All right, so mesh, PLA, temp tower, that's the end of the beginning code. It's gonna do type inner wall, type wall outer, type skin. It's gonna do this for several layers. And let's see, that's layer one. We got a long way to go. We're gonna be looking for layer 50. That's layer 117. Okay, so somewhere above here will be a temperature change. Layer 116. Layer 101. Okay, so should be in here, right in here somewhere. We have uh, an extruder call there. Uh, if you don't know what I'm looking at, basically this is the code that it sends to the machine. This is the G code file that comprises all the tiny little moves that your printer is going to make. So layer 100. Yes. Layer 100. Well, okay, this is taking forever to find, so we're actually going to do this. Let's go to find, and we're going to look for a G10 command, because that should be... in there. Let's see. Search. Find next. What? G10. Apparently, this doesn't want to cooperate. So there should be one right here at the beginning. It, uh, okay, so it's M104 is the Marlin command, which I'm using. I was looking at, that was for RepRap, so let's see if we can find an M104, shall we? So, here is our first one. There is our second, that's at layer 5, then again at layer 50, then at layer 95, then 140, 145. So, it is following the schema that we put, and it is actually working. Sorry it took me so long to get to that. There is uh, a lot of different G code commands. Usually they're universal across types, but some of them are different between RepRap and Marlin, so um, now we know. Let's go ahead and close this video out here. Um, I hope that was helpful to you. You can get your temp tower printing. And then what you're going to do is look at the tower and decide which one looks the best. And you can tell that is going to work the best for that filament. And you have it dialed in for the temperature. I don't think you have to do this every time you get a new spool of filament. But I do recommend printing them for each brand of filament and sometimes I will print them for each color of filament because the colors do do different things depending on uh, the brand. So um, brand is most important. 
If you get a new brand of filament, definitely check out a temp tower and make sure that you are in the right area before you go and do a long print and get a poor quality from that spool because you didn't turn it up high enough or down low enough. You never know. That's going to be it for this video, guys. We have plenty more to come in the coming days. Stay tuned, and we will see you in the next one.